Blog Talk Radio. Hello, hello, everyone. This is Chris, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini awakening experience. And uh, I would also like to welcome my co-host, Amelia Santara. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Chris. So, so <laughs> there's a bit of a wait there for you to come on. I, I, were you deciding? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> <laughs> We're no, that, right? no. Some, <laughs> sometimes the microphone mute, and I don't know. It just responds differently some nights. So, again, it's good to be here and and co-hosting. Hello to Rosemary. Hello to you, and hello to all our listeners. Um, yes. yes. May I begin, Rosemary, Chris, yes. with making my announcement? Oh, please, if you'd like. Okay, okay. Well, I'm going to begin again um, with announcing about the seminars that Kundalini Awakening Systems will be um, doing in 2014. I'm organizing two of these seminars. One is going to be held in New York, and the other one is going to be held in Ireland. The New York seminar is happening on March the 23rd and March the 24th. And it's, it's going to be held in a really nice venue about 35 miles north of New York City. And um, we'll be gathering on Saturday morning at 11 a.m. And the seminar will run through and finish at 5 p.m. on Sunday. I can give people details if they're interested in attending. And um, if they write to me at kundalinimatters at gmail.com. Um, and I really would encourage people to consider coming to the seminar. I still have a few places left. It's going to be a small and intimate gathering of 10 people. And um, so please do write to me at kundalinimatters at gmail.com if you have an interest in attending there. The other seminar is going to be a European seminar and it's been held in Ireland. And this, again, is in a lovely venue, uh, about a half an hour's drive from Dublin Airport. And as part of your, um, your coming, you will be collected and brought to the venue if you fly into Dublin Airport. Again, this is slightly different in that it begins on Friday night. Well, the seminar doesn't, but we gather on Friday night. And the seminar begins on Saturday and runs through again until Sunday. So, um, again, it's the same email address, kundalinimatters at gmail.com. And I would be delighted to hear from you there. And again, I'll just make a quick announcement about where you can go if you would like to make a donation to the work that Chrism does. The name of the website is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And on the upper right-hand corner, you will see a donate button. And it's a very um, easy um, way of making a donation. There's absolutely no pressure or expectation for you to make a donation, but all donations are gratefully um, received indeed. So that is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. So those are my two, my two seminars, as I'm calling them, that I'm organizing, and Rosemary is organizing them. Thank you. And, 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 uh, and speaking of Rosemary, I would like to uh, give Rosemary uh, the microphone now. Thank you, Chrisom, and thank you, Amelia, and uh, all our listeners and in the archives as well. You are hearing from me and uh, Eileen Lauro also that we are having a seminar in Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota, September 27th and 28th. A beautiful time of year in Minnesota, and it will be quite different than the weather they're having right now. And it is, I'm eternally grateful to Kristen and to Eileen for the seminar two years ago that I attended, maybe two and a half by now. And that is the beginning for me of being here at the Ashram now. So thank you. Very, very profitable experience. Very powerful. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, New York, Ireland, and and uh, Minnesota in that order. So if people would like to come and experience uh, a Kundalini Awakening, as Rosemary did um, two years ago, you say? 
It's about two years ago. Two and a half. It was two last fall. Two last fall. Um, Rosemary, as far as I know, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the seminar in, in uh, Minnesota that Eileen organized is your first experience with Kundalini? Yes. And have you had any symptoms or anything since there in the, in the last two and a half years? Yes, I have a completely different life and outlook on life and guidance, especially inner guidance and an awareness of Kundalini's presence in my life. And I was saying, being here at the ashram for two and a half months, to deepen that and to be with Chris our teacher. Well, um, and it's an honor, Rosemary, to have you here. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's an honor to be a part of your Kundalini Awakening equation, uh, as it is an honor to be part of everybody who's listening to this broadcast, Kundalini Equation. Uh, and I would like to rec- recognize those in the archives who are visiting us in the future. I'd like to say hello and welcome to you, and hello and welcome to the uh, to present listeners as well. Uh, today, I want to talk a little bit about divinity. So I guess, uh, Amelia, the, the, the title for this one could be Kundalini and Divinity, unless we've already done that one. <laughs> okay. Um more specifically, I'm looking at the idea of how the human being will attempt to draw divinity in to support their ego. So, for instance, we have, uh, we say we're in a castle and we're being besieged by an army. Well, the army really wants to take the castle, and so they're praying to God, Oh, dear God, let us take this castle. Oh, my gosh, dear God. And then, of course, the people in the castle are going, Oh, dear God, don't let that army come into the castle. You know, And so <laughs> we're having a push-me-pull-you with regards to divinity. And what I want you to understand, or what I'm trying to get across here, is that divinity is real, and it will only take sides uh, to the point that it desires to take sides, not what the the uh, the people in in the moment perhaps are asking for, unless of course you've got a very uh, you know you've got an adept among somebody, and they would you know back in those days they would try to get an adept to uh, to support their government or their their control, um, and the, you know you can you can you can actually get an adept that knows about weather modification and you know. From that, uh, a great level of power can be exerted over a people. Uh, Not so much these days, except in the in the very very far, uh, you know, the twenty families that run the world financially. uh, These folks, you know, they're they're also being kind of possessed uh, because their wealth allows them to feel omnipotent, and through that hubris of omnipotence they are themselves taken control of by other entities other beings uh, that that have that interest uh, with regards to the kundalini even now as people uh, find out about the kundalini and want to have the kundalini awaken in them uh, 99% of the people are just there so so they can do magical things they can they can have powers over other people or over their environment or over their their personal life equation they want to have they want to be superman superwoman uh you know they want to they want to do those things and they just don't quite understand yet uh that that is not the nature of kundalini is not to fulfill your wildest desires matter of fact it, it's a little bit of the opposite it's there to help you not have any more wild desires that you attach to and so, you know, this this being the agenda, as you come into the divine fold, the divine field, the, the flesh is made divine, you begin to experience a change in your, shall we say, efforts to gratify the ego. As we go back in time, we can see, you know, from the earliest days of, of, of organized community back in Sumerian times and uh, you know, people people had a level of of uh, misunderstanding about their own power. 
they would look outside themselves for power. They didn't realize that as a creation of the of the divine at all, that they are a power in and of themselves, and they do not require divine guidance, or, or I should say divine intervention in order to to uh, be released from a, a certain situation. Uh, divine guidance is always there to be given, and and I think that's a, a very good thing for a person to seek out, and this would be a a, an excellent reason to uh, to awaken the Kundalini, as long as the person knows, you know, that it's not, you know, just you know, cherries, plums, and strawberries all the time. Uh, sometimes, you know, there are difficult moments as a person detoxes from their, you know, sometimes fifty years of programming in this life. As they detox from that programming, well, those toxicities are going to rise to the surface. You're going to, to some degree, you're going to experience some of that over and over and over again until it gets out of your system. And uh, and this this is also of a divine origin. This is also the divine working through the human individual in order to cleanse that person of the of the uh, the many, shall we say, not as helpful as they could be levels of programming that our society puts out. Um, now, when when people are in the the position that I described with a castle surrounded by an army, yes, the prayers are heard. Yes, everybody is listened to all the time. There is never a time when you're not being listened to or heard. Uh, in many ways, you know, there is a karma that is being developed there, and and whether the castle stands or falls. You know, karma is going is in the process of being made, and and depending on the 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 strength of unity that 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 the people may have with themselves, with each other, with themselves personally, will determine uh, whether or not the invading force uh, will win. Number one or two, uh, be able to to uh, to reprogram the population. Force, force is, you know, force has been used over and over and over. Even now to this day, it's being used in order to modify people's belief systems. And this will, whether or not it believes with, with your personal belief system, whether you have one or not, force will be used to, to, uh, to push you into levels of programming that allow you to do this, but don't, that won't allow you to do that. I mean, so you have to kind of play the game if you're going to live in society, and I'm all for that. I think that's just fine. Uh, but when it comes to a kundalini person attempting to enlist divinity in order to to uh, lend spiritual corruption into other people's lives, well, now that's that's a different story, and and there we have some very def- that's a definite thing not to do. And in, in, in this way, I'm going to suggest that, that you do not come into uh, warmongering type of belief systems that, that would tempt your ego to use divinity or the skills of the Kundalini in a way that would not be beneficial to yourself or for the other people that you may be directing it at. In other words, get out of any kind of a belief system that forces you to do violence upon another person or an animal or anything. I'm not talking about self-defense, okay? Uh, You know, sometimes self-defense is a necessary thing. But when you go out of your way to plan, strategize uh, a level of attack uh, of a hurtful quality uh, using your kundalini and trying to to uh, push divinity into the equation. Well, you come up with a very interesting scenario, and basically what happens is a person that begins to do this uh, is inviting demonic possession of themselves by those entities that resonate with that level of violence. So when the person is, is praying, oh, my God, let me decimate my enemy, well, you know, you're calling upon demonic structures that would more than happily, you know, help you vanquish uh, the people that you're against. Uh, And yet your kundalini, your kundalini will not help you there. But it will allow you to be trapped. 
It will allow you to endure a painful possession by virtue of your agreements to allow demonic uh, um, uh, programming to enter into your kundalini awakening equation. You'll get to go to hell, definitely, every night for for a matter of years, if that's what it takes. Okay. And I know, I know, no, no, no. You know, some people say, well, I've been to hell and I've, I've lived through hell and I've come through hell and I've got hell to go through and I'll go through that too. You know, I, I hear it all from the people who, you know, have this huge, great ego fixation on, on what they think they've gone through with regards to a hell realm. But regardless, regardless of that, you don't need to go there. If you don't attach to these competitive belief systems, the Babylonian belief system is a competitive belief system. The Enochian, E-O-C-H-I-A-N, I believe, yeah, E-N-O-C-H-I-A-N, the Enochian systems of magic and, and sorcery. Well, these, these are systems that take away free will. Uh, they they have no problem taking away the free will of other people, and therefore, by reflection, they have no problem taking away your free will either. And and so I will definitely counsel you away from this. Don't use sigils. Don't use. I mean, you know, if you're going to get into sorcery and witchcraft, leave your kundalini alone. If you're still at the stage where you have. Uh, a, an ego-infested expression. Well, let that infestation run its course. Don't enlist the aid of the divine in order to manifest your ego's greatest desires. They're not all really good, and they attract, you know, sometimes a very, very, very negative crowd, and it's very hard to distance yourself from these. You know, Wearing a crucifix and, and making the cross on your on your forehead or your across your chest isn't going to do it. Okay, we're talking, you know, we're talking belief systems that predate Christianity by thousands and thousands of years. You know, for almost that many years, those people practiced that belief system. They created, you know, levels and levels of very, very powerful demonic type entities that are only too happy to be respected in your body. They're only too happy to pull in people around you in order that they too may be possessed by some more of the same type of entities. And so uh, this will not be allowed to flourish in a, in a positive, beneficial programming environment if it is allowed to occur at all. Okay. Kundalini has an agenda with itself and with the person that's having it. Kundalini is in control. There is no ancient power that is stronger or is more able to discern the truth from the lie. Kundalini is it. And so, as I have said and I have written you know, many times, take the advice from your Kundalini first. Before you respond to that handsome, engaging, smiling face that says, Hey, have I got a deal for you? Okay? Take the advice of your kundalini first. Do not practice mantras that you don't know what they mean. Do not use sigils that you do not know what they represent. If you're going to be a witch or, or a sorcerer or a, what do they call that, the, the warlock or any of these, you know, these old systems of ego-based power, then leave your kundalini alone. Mature your way through these areas first. Grow and evolve beyond the need to be you know, controlling or, or, or taking away other people's choices, putting a hex on a person or sending demons to punish somebody that you don't like. This is a great way uh, to, to begin to sculpt your next expression 
uh, and certainly within a Kundalini context, you'll get hit hard. You'll get hit hard, either in uh, your next life or in this life or both. And I don't want you, I don't want you to have to suffer any more than your karma that you've already accrued uh, allows you to suffer. Let's not build more. Okay, so this would be a uh, an anti-karmic development uh, conversation in a way with regards to these uh, to these belief systems. Um, we have people in power these days who are who are practicing the uh, Babylonian systems. Um, Moloch, you know, they pray to a 40-foot Moloch, the owl, you know, west of here about 15 miles. It's just, you know, it's, it would be absolutely hilarious if it wasn't so pathetic. Okay. Uh, the misuse of their will, the misuse of their resources, the, the, uh, the direction towards corruption and destruction and, uh, you know, qualities of this nature are so very base, and yet, obviously, we have to go through them because we elect these people to power. We buy the products that these people put out for us to purchase. So we have made them who they are. They may not realize that. They think that, well, I was born wealthy, therefore God has decreed that because I was born wealthy, then it's my way and everybody else can walk on the highway. You know, this is an attitude of a lot of the people that are even in uh, you know, in, in power positions within the United States right now and other places in Europe and China, you know, Soviet Union, it's, or I should say Russian Confederation and, and other areas. So uh, do your very best not to become involved with these belief systems that nurture war, that nurture domination, that nurture hurtful attitudes uh, you know, solely for the, you know, the uh, the joy of the ego. Get that out of your system first before you consciously awaken Kundalini, like Rosemary did. Rosemary came to a seminar. Uh, she she had been, uh, as as some of you may know, she she was a a uh, Catholic nun of the Marianite. Is that right, Marianite? What is it? It was a, well, the community name. My church is the Marianite Church now, but I was uh, in a Roman Catholic community of women, yes. nuns. Yes. And where was that? That was in Minnesota, right? Originally Pittsburgh, and then I was transferred to Minnesota. Okay, all right. So originally in Pittsburgh, and you were transferred to Minnesota, and you were one of those flying nuns that. That Sally Field uh, represented, right? Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Unidentified flying nun, a UFN. Anyway, so Rosemary uh, went through 25 years of being a nun. She 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 uh, joined that community when she was 16, and she came out when she was 25 years older. 25 years older, and so. That induced a level of refinement that when she came to the seminar, she was ready. She was ready. I'm not saying that you have to be a nun or a priest for 25 years in order to reach a level of refinement that is acceptable to the Kundalini. I'm not saying that at all. I mean, you know, just even just a few months of a practice can can be conducive to Kundalini development. Um, what I am saying is that some of you, your life and, the, and the, the, the choices that you have made in your life are directly conducive to Kundalini awakening later on in your life. Okay. So uh, as, as Rosemary would tell me about her experience with the nuns, about why she joined and, you know, what was all about that. Hang on, I'm going to take off my jacket. Oh, God. I tell you what, the Kundalini will cook you. Cook you alive. <laughs> okay. I'm being cooked right now. Okay. Um, what I am saying is that um, the choices we make uh, help 
discern and decide the course of spiritual evolution that we will involve ourselves in. And if, if all of you who are hearing this, um, you're receiving an invitation, a gift through the, through the voice from my Kundalini. Rosemary here, she's at, she's here at the ashram and she's, she's receiving every level of energetic exchange that, that her, her beingness can hold. Um, it, it's not an easy thing. It is not an easy thing. But she's doing it, and she's doing it well, and I applaud her, and I'm going to encourage her to continue and to, and to move forward. And, uh, and I think she, she, she has everything that she needs in order to do this. Now, with regards to current situations, say, on the Internet, um, most people will not have a a kundalini-based group around them. It's still that few and far between. But I'm going to ask you, I'm going to suggest, shall we say, I'm going to suggest to you that you avoid anything that uses spells or sigils or uh, possession or channeling or or sacred mantras of a religion you have no clue about, I'm going to suggest you not do any of these things at all. You can get stuck. I got caught in one of these spider webs earlier on, and, you know, it's, Jesus, you know, it's a really difficult task to get out of that spider web. And I don't want you to go there. I'm not talking about a hell realm. This is something more pathetic, if you can get more pathetic than a hell realm. Uh, you know, this is this is somebody who's just, you know, uh, trying to get power from from your imprisonment, basically, like a collector. So you don't need to go there. Don't just take any diagram or map or, or, or book or prayer or mantra, you know, be it tarot cards or playing cards or, you know, the outlines of, of a game or a Ouija board. Don't do these things. And I'm not saying don't do them because you're guaranteed it's going to be terrible, horrible for you. What I am saying is that you're reaching outside of the most important part and that's your kundalini. You're reaching outside, trying to bring something inside that your inside's already had for like a billion years. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Kundalini's already got the wheel handled for you. <laughs> for, for some of you, I should say. Okay, we have a phone number here if you'd like to call in. Uh, we have the phone number is guest call in three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Amelia, I'll give you a moment to uh, grab your mic and run in the kitchen from the bathroom. There you are. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> now you live in Ireland, and, and there has been a lot of that kind of give and take there uh, between the. The, uh, the 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 warring nations of the Tuatha De Danann, the Parthalonians, the Firbolg, and the uh, the Milesians, just to name four four of the main ones, without naming Christianity as a main one. So I guess I should name Christianity as another main one, the current one. Uh, have you felt, uh, or is there in, in Ireland? Is there a is there a big uh, resurgence of Druidic uh, beliefs and practices? Yes, I think there probably is cousin, but it never left in many ways. When ah. I was growing up, um, that was very much part of. I was very aware of that aspect of my culture. And yet um, Christianity wanted to dominate that and suppress that, right? Oh, yes. When okay. Christianity came, it changed and incorporated an awful lot of the ceremonies, the rituals, the connection with the earth, 
all of those all things were mutated to suit the Can, Christian uh, yeah, yeah. perspective. Could you, could you put yeah. your headphones yeah. on? They're on. They're on. We're getting an echo from you. I guess I your mic. Yeah. yeah. It's the same <laughs> mic I've been using for the last few weeks. But... All right. All right. Oh well, thank you. Thank you for that, Amelia. So yes, so yes, you know, really in, in many places on the world uh, where land masses have changed, you know, changed human uh, habitation or controls, uh, you'll have the sublimation of one belief system by the conquering belief system. Uh, Christianity borrowed a lot from the Romans, who borrowed a lot from the Greeks, who borrowed a lot from, you know, all the, you know, some of the main uh, um, belief systems of that time, including including Babylonian, Sumerian, and, and things going way back into, into time. Uh, to some degree, this is a level of karmic development that people will need to go through uh, but I'm going to suggest that for those of you who are seeking Kundalini, you've already been there. You don't need to to go there afresh. It's it's already now. Unless you do, okay, unless you're one of these guys that want Kundalini awakening so bad that that they're willing to corrupt any and all who come their way in order to get their way, then uh, then you will have this karmic experience to to become acquainted with. Uh, but for the most part, uh, Kundalini people do not need to do this. Okay. Now, one of the things that can happen with awakened Kundalini is that very, very strong levels of service, this, this, this love for humanity, the love for the environment, the love will become expanded, and and the and the love of giving service to to a certain segment of the population will become very, very, very strong. And this will pull you in. Or this, this can pull you in to the basics, shall we say, of that struggle. And if, if you don't know to discern, uh, if you're not able to take a step back and look at the entire uh, paradigm of what that, uh, we'll, we'll just say a war, what that war is all about, well, then you really can't make a great, uh, shall we say, uh, evolutionary leap with regards to the Kundalini because you don't have enough information to support a service that you're trying to give, a Kundalini service that you're trying to give. And, and what, will what, what will typically happen is people will just begin taking sides. And then the side that they decide is the right side, and then that's the side that they're going to to manifest through, service through. And this this is a karma collector here. That will definitely create and collect karma for you because because you haven't taken the time to learn the the history, say, of that certain uh, altercation between a popula two populations. Uh, then you don't really know the karmic boundaries that are being balanced and the karmic uh, boundaries that are being created. And sometimes it's just a, it's, it's, it's an obvious role reversal, like with the Israelis. You know, the Israelis are experiencing the role reversal. They were almost completely decimated by a people that they have in behavior seemingly become, which would be the Nazis. Okay. Right now, Israel is one of the, uh, shall we say, more uh, predisposed towards racism and violent clash uh, and taking over other people's land than they are with just being happy with what they've got and trying to, uh, to find balances within different ethnic populations. But, you know, it seems that the Israeli, you know, it's all about being a Jew. If you're not a Jew, then you're not really... Uh, worth considering. And this is a very, very, very common uh, program that is initiated through competing societies. Uh, before it was the Jews, well, then it was the, the Germans. Uh, 
Okay, before it was the Jews, it was the Germans. Before the Germans, it was the French, say. Before the French, it was the English. Before the English, it was, you know, and you just go back in time. Everybody's playing the bad guy some of the time. Okay, it's something that we need to move through. You, having Kundalini, you really need to begin to do your work to determine the level and quality of service that you want to give to others. Do the work. If you're going to support a war, then you really need to know what's going on with that war. You need to listen to your Kundalini before you listen to some guy, you know, running a radio or a TV show or writing a book. You need to listen to your kundalini first, and especially if that goes against your your ego or your desire to serve, well, you go against that because your ego is pointing you in the wrong direction. And it's the same for, for anybody that's going to show you a quick shortcut to power. A quick shortcut to power like, say, uh, Enochian uh, mantras or techniques of that nature, magical things, things where you're basically using demonic uh, realms in order to achieve specific outcome. Uh, this, a guy named uh, Bremelin the Mage, uh, and he's got a book out there. The, the, I think it's called the, the the Teachings of a Bremelin the Mage. He is a really good guy. He's a really, really good guy. He's a 14th century sorcerer. And he wrote this treatise. Um, and um, I, yeah, I forget what it's called. But, but uh, it's, I, I'm sure you can look it up on Amazon, uh, Brummel and the Mage. And uh, he basically says, you know, don't do this work unless you are a pure of heart. If you are not pure of heart, then this, this path will consume you. I want to reiterate his words. Do not walk the kundalini path unless your heart is pure, or at least you're in the process of making it pure. Now, pure is this absolutist term. I'm happy with just increasing levels of purity <laughs> with people, with people of the 20, 21st century. I'm really happy to see a person in the process of purification which also means that they're in the process of detoxifying their beingness from mannerisms and behaviors that caused uh, levels of corruption to occur. Um, a Bremelin is very strong about that. Matter of fact, uh, one, one, of, one of the things I read this, gosh, maybe 30 years ago, um, and I chose not to go there because I could see that my heart at that time was not where it needed to be. So I just, I put it away. And, and I put it away in a safe place. And the rats got to it and chewed up the pages, which I thought was really kind of cool. What a cool way for the Kundalini to say, not for you and not at this time, if at all. And I want to be the rat to chew up your fixation that you may have on some sort of a belief system that allows you quick access to easy power because they don't exist, my man. Quick access to easy power does not exist. And get rid of the idea that you think it does. Okay. All right. So with regard to a Bremelin, uh, he would use, and this was called for in some of the incantations and spells and whatnot that he would use, a, uh, a child of not more than age six or seven, because why? Why would he want to use a child to do demonic controls, which is what he was doing? It's because of their innocence, their purity. They are not corrupt. They are innocent. You see, in order to do God's work, you must be innocent. You must have developed yourself to the point where you can have a pure heart. As pure a heart as 
as it can be while you're still here in the body within the five sense controlled system of, of, uh, of physical expression here on this world. You must seek out purity where you, where you have it within yourself. Not where some teacher like Chrisom comes along and says, oh, you, you must do this, you must do that, and, uh, yes, and, and, and I will make things all better for you, my friend. No, no, you don't listen to, don't listen to people tell you that, that there's a quick, easy access to power because typically it's going to blow up in your face. And that's about as quick and easy as it's going to get. Okay, that's about as quick and easy as it's going to get. So know this and use this and bring this into a, a level of understanding within your uh, practice and acquisition of a body that is able to have and hold the kundalini. That's the acquisition point. It's not about whether the kundalini will awaken in you. It's whether or not you're... You're working your body, your, your, your mind, your body, your ego, your, your uh, emotions, and your spirituality towards the kundalini awakening. Okay? It's not just about receiving. If you're not doing the protocols, at least in my case, if you're not following the protocols that I ask you to follow, you're not going to get it. Period. If you're not willing to do the refinement work, then you're not going to get it. And it's just like you know these old systems. You know, these old systems, they're powerful creations because they're still fresh. They're just, they're locked in a time zone of, of uh, uh, it's a memory-based time deficit. Okay. Outside of humanity, time doesn't exist. You know, human, you know the, the changing of the seasons, the growing of the body, these things elicit an understanding and an application of time upon uh, the human being, upon the mentality of the human being. That's not necessarily so for divinity. And that means that those lower divine beings, uh, the demonic and things of that nature, uh, they're still there. They're still fresh. They're still active. You, you know, you start calling on them more than once, and, and you know, you may be surprised about, you know, what what comes to visit. I I wrote something on uh, the uh, Facebook Kundalini Awakening exclamation point. So any of you that are on Facebook and and uh, read that piece I wrote, but more importantly, look at the picture. The picture is so perfect. For the point that I'm trying to make with this, okay, levels of divinity that are still in, encased in competition do not share power. Let me repeat that. Levels of divinity that are still involved in competitive behaviors do not share power. It may promise to share the power, but then it'll find a reason not to. These are levels. These these are, in a way, in my in my understanding of these are like the fallen ones. They exist. Absolutely, without a doubt. Okay, and they won't share power. Where in 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 God's green earth would a human develop the level of hubris? and ego calcification that will allow them to think that they could control semi-divine entities simply because they're chanting, you know, some, some words in, a, in, a, in an old belief system. What's really going to happen is that person is going to be dominated and, and possessed by those entities from that belief system. And from there, a level of uh, a vortex a vortextual uh, transformation is being given. There, the uh, the entity that is now using that person's body is going to try to suck more people into its orbit, into orbiting around itself, so that more, more and more and more people can be dominated. And, and typically, what will happen is they will offer quick and easy access 
to power. But let me clear it up for you. It's not quick and easy access to power that you can use to rule over other people. It's quick and easy power of you. You're the one that they're taking the quick and easy power from. And you have allowed that to happen by making that choice. By making that choice. By looking outside instead of looking within. Okay? By looking outside instead of looking within. Um, Oh, what? Amelia? Amelia, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Are you awake? I'm awake. (laughs) What do you think Can you hear me? (laughs) Yes. Can you hear me, Quizzum? Yes. What do you think about this? <laughs> oh, I I agree with everything that you, that you you've been talking oh, about actually, that is, and that is especially such a, about the. <laughs> well, that is such a, that's, that's an easy escape. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm I'm coming. I'm going to expand. It's the thing about the power <laughs> that that's the easy access to power. It's how I mean we. I suppose we all really want, you know, the easy access to everything. Therefore, you know, I can understand why that happens to people. And you were speaking about, you know, ego infected expressions, I think. And I, and I was thinking to myself, the thing is, though, we don't recognize that in ourselves, perhaps, when that's what's happening, you know. People don't, I think, recognize what is occurring for them when they're in that expression. Well, that's why we're having this show. It's easier to observe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, people need to recognize that that (laughs) negativity doesn't share power that way. It's like a black hole. A black hole never shares power, right? Amelia, Mm -hmm. are you there? A black hole never shares power. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> what are you laughing about? You're making me laugh. Oh, I'm just. Oh, I'm sorry. Go on. Okay. I'd like no, to say, and about being sure in the process. What you were saying about that as well, or at least being in, um, you know, becoming. I mean, working on that, working the body. Um, well, actually, all working of that. The ethics, That's all red working, pages. Working the ethics, working the morality. Yeah. As you know, you know, I get accused of all kinds of things, from eating babies to to being a, a character out of a Harry Potter movie. You know, I get accused of everything. And uh, all I'm going to suggest is that people practice their ethics as strongly as they practice their physical body if they go to a gym daily. Okay. Yeah. What What are you doing, Amelia? You're walking. No, that was my fridge dropping ice cubes into the tray. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. We no, out here in the something. west. I out, out, here, out here in the United States, we have we have an ice man drive up in a truck and he delivers it in, in our fridge. So that's how we do it. <laughs> Out here in rural California. Anyway, yeah, okay. No, ours is all, uh, you know. Uh, do we have people in the uh, in the uh, chat room? Yes, we do. Um, there are no questions there, though. We have uh, people with numbers, and we have Suka and Fashji as the only Suka. two with names today. <laughs> Hi, Suka. Hi, Fashji. Thank. Welcome to the conversation. Um, I hope you timed it well so that you missed the announcements. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not fair. No, they don't know what you mean because they weren't here. <laughs> um, hello? Okay. Hello. 
Oh, I think Chrism has gone. Actually, Chrism has gone. Okay. Oh, I hate when this happens. Okay, listeners, it's me again. Um, yes, yeah, so I just hang about until Chrism comes back. And um, yeah, uh, that's very interesting. Chrism had actually written a piece today in the um, the Kundalini Awakening System um, exclamation exclamation point on Facebook. And it was a very interesting piece. So, and the photograph is quite um, it's quite descriptive as well. So, if you have an opportunity, go and go and have a read of that. I think he's back. He is. Hello, Chrism. Yep. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I, I either pressed a, a button wrong or something like that. My apologies, folks. So, what I was saying before I rudely interrupted myself was that uh, practice your ethics more than you practice your physical conditioning. If you take a lot of pride in how your body looks and how it works and how much it weighs and, you know, how much makeup it needs or doesn't need, how clean it is, uh, do the same thing with your ethical body. I'll even suggest that the ethical body is the sixth body of human expression. Practice your ethics. Practice your morality. Feel the truth from your kundalini. Now, that's if you have it awakened. And and, and I can see, you know, if, if you've had the kundalini awakened and you're going, kundalini in me, is this the truth that I see? Or something of that nature. Uh, you can listen to that, and it, and it will guide you well. Uh, as long as it's you're, you're going within and you're not depending on something outside of yourself that's couching or... or, or, or uh, disguising itself as the Kundalini, which entities like to do sometimes. No. Uh, practice your ethics. Do not engage in competitive belief systems. And this, this extends to teachers. Do not engage in competing your teacher against another person's teacher or your understanding against another person's understanding or your belief religion uh, against somebody else's belief or religion. Don't do this. This is not something that you need to do anymore. The only religion that you really want to practice is that which is occurring within you right now. For those of you that are that have the Kundalini, well, you've already got the transformation taking place. Rosemary. Rosemary been in, has been in this practice for almost exactly two and a half years. And she's having classical Kundalini symptomology while she's here, but also while she's back home in Minnesota. She, too, is practicing her tolerance, her forgiveness, her patience, her trust, her service, her humility, okay, her love. She is practicing all these things, and she's, you know, and I make her practice them all the time. And I'm going to suggest the very same thing to you. Practice it all the time. There is never a day off that you should ever want to take from being a high, moral, ethical kind of person. Okay? Study different societies and see what, what levels of ethics and moralities are, are, are transcultural or cross-cultural. Okay? Understand this. Like, for instance, uh, here in the States and in uh, Britain and Scotland and Ireland... In and, and some other countries, um, showing the human body is considered obscene. Matter of fact, uh, I think we've got a law uh, here in the States that, uh, that are called obscenity laws. And one of those obscenity laws is the, you know, some, somebody showing a reproductive organ or something. That is not a cross-cultural thing. That's just, that's a... That's a, a a lack of understanding and acceptance just here in this country and the countries that I named. In other countries, like say uh, Aboriginal countries or Native American country, or not Native American, but uh, like the Aborigines of Australia or the Bushmen of Africa or the uh, the the Native peoples of the Amazon basin, body parts, reproductive organs. Well, you know they've got they've got their uses, but you know they're you know, there's no, not the same kind of Victorian-based fixation on them. 
And I use that, that term Victorian because in the States, you know, that was basically what was taught, and as well as uh, in, in parts of Europe and, and certainly in Britain, Canada. Uh, wherever Christianity has, has spread itself, uh, uh, the ethics and morals will change uh, uh, according to, to the ethics and morals of, of what Christianity espouses. Uh, so you get a cult between Christianity and, say, an aboriginal belief system. And, you know, it'll, it'll depend on the, the individual population about which one they want to follow. With Kundalini, Kundalini doesn't really care as long as you follow ethical, moral guidelines that fit with your spiritual equation. So in a way, it's the Kundalini that will determine your uh, ethical foundations. Now, by virtue of being born in this world at this time and to the family that you were born with, to the scholastic system that you were put through, to the uh, societal programming that you were put through and are continuously bombarded with, uh, these things are not bad. They, they fit your karma. They fit your karma. You're not where you are accidentally. So they fit your karma. And in fitting that karma, you can take the moral guidances that are being provided by uh, the kundalini within you as it pertains to the society that you're in. Okay, so if the society that you're in says, if it says to you, oh, showing of organs is obscene and should not be done ever, well, then you have to abide by those rules because that's where you are. You are here. You're inside of an agreement with millions of other people that say, okay, uh, we won't show our reproductive organs because we don't feel that's polite. However, if you were in a different society that, that advocated the showing of reproductive organs, well, then the kundalini would support that. The kundalini knows the society that you're in. It knows what you're up against. It knows the clashes that you have with people, and it knows the, the harmonies that you have with other people. It knows your challenges. It just reminds me of that Santa Claus song. It, he knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. <laughs> it's, so, it's so perfect for the Kundalini because it really does, since it's inside you, watching you do all of this 24-7 for about 100 years, give or take. Okay, so know this, know this, do not go for easy access to power and, and sublimate your ethics. Keep your ethics strong, and what you'll find is as you keep your ethics strong, you won't have access to that quick and easy power, because in some ways, you're going to have to abrogate your ethics in order to have quick and easy access to power. And from a kundalini context, I'm going to say, don't do that. Kundalini is all the power that you will ever need for the next billion years. Kundalini is the source of the force in this universe, this multiverse. Really, I, I, this is such a true thing, this, this statement. Kundalini, the source of the force. Period. Now, Nitin Adsol has made a movie called Kundalini, and, uh, and I wrote a lot of that movie with him. And I also wrote, a, you know, he needed some one-liners, so I gave him that one line. And that, the, that one-liner is the one that has really stuck with me the most because it really, uh, it really describes it very, very nicely in one sentence. Kundalini is the source of the force. Because Kundalini is direct enter energetic representation of divinity into uh, mundane humanity. And I only say mundane humanity. You don't hear me saying mundane uh, biology or mundane chemistry because mundane biology and mundane chemistry are, are they're only mundane as, as long as humans look at it in a mundane way. Divinity doesn't have that visual limitation. 
divinity can see everything for its truth, for its essence. Partly because divinity is what created this realm, this world, this plane of physical existence. Divinity created this so that we can do this. You know, you've got the Urantia book, and you've got uh, uh, A Course in Miracles, and you have these things that try to uh, describe uh, an organization of angels or, you know, the organization of all that is in the universe with regard to the Urantia book. And uh, A Course in Miracles, which is really, a, you know, a, a Christianized version of how to awaken the Kundalini without mentioning the word Kundalini. A lot of people have a very good uh, level of awakening with the uh, Course in Miracles. Um, but once the Kundalini comes up, I will advise those within the Course of Miracles to step out of that uh, course and go into the Course of Kundalini Miracles. And, uh, and continue their education there. Uh, the Urantia people, uh, they just, you know, they really like what that channeler was writing. And, and evidently it was channeled by a bunch of people, not just one person. Uh, as in the Course of Miracles, are, you know, another channeled level of information, which I don't really agree with. Those of you who know me, you know, as far as I'm concerned, entities lie. And they lie all the time. And, you know, to say that, oh, you know, I am, I am the source, I am, you know, all of this stuff, it's, it's just baloney. Um, but, but you can tell a good thing from the fruit that, it, that its harvest provides. And, and I think the harvest for A Course in Miracles has been fairly uh, outspoken towards a, a positive level of divine relationship with regards to the Kundalini. So, you know, I grant them that. Uh, outside of that, I'm, I'm really, uh, really, people who are in A Course of Miracles, they need to graduate from that limitation, that limited aspect, and really move into the Kundalini if they can, if, if they can do that. Not, not many will. Um, with regards to the Urantia, it's channeled information. And even though it does provide a... Uh, a, uh, shall we say, a logical linear uh, description of, uh, you know, the tasks that the divine uh, must must go through on a daily basis doesn't mean that it's real. Uh, people, you know, entities can say whatever they want. You know, there's there's nothing there going. Oh, you must be truthful, Mister Entity. No, not at all, not at all. They will lie, and they will lie repeatedly, and they will base the lie truth to make it more believable. Okay, that's and it's necessary that they do this. We must learn to discern. So you ask yourself, well, okay, uh, Christian says I must learn to discern, and so, okay, so this, this, how do I do that? <laughs> and I'll suggest that you question whether a certain thought, action, or ability is will be used to hurt anyone. Is anyone going to be harmed by this? Anyone. Is any kind of life to be harmed by this decision? Is any kind of life to be hurt by this thought? Because you've got to remember that in order to control our behaviors, we have to learn to control our thoughts. Once you discern that, ah, okay, uh, this this thought is going to hurt other people. This this is going to really cause some people some problems. Well, then you need to discern if that is a good thing, because not all pain is bad. The pain of the art entering the the the, the person's fingers as they learn how to play the flute or the guitar, well, that's not a bad thing. They want to play that flute. They want to play that guitar, and so there's some pain involved in the fingertips and the finger movements. Okay. So then you have to discern what kind of pain. Is it hurtful pain? Is it ego-based pain? Is it something that you're doing for self-aggrandizement? Is it something you're doing to, to hurt another person that you may get ahead in life? 
Are you stealing somebody's purse? Are you stealing somebody's retirement? Are you a hedge fund manager? Are you stealing investors' money? What are you doing with it and why? And if you're honest with yourself, your kundalini will teach you what is appropriate. And through that teaching, you will learn to discern. But before your kundalini is awakened, follow the, the, the practices of the safeties protocols, which you can reach on Kundalini Awakening System, the number one, dot com. Go to the left-hand menu, and you'll see the safeties. Press on the safeties. Read those safeties. Copy, hard copy those safeties. I'm giving you permission right now. Hard copy those safeties. Put a copy of them in the car. Put a po- copy of them in the bathroom if you do reading there. Do a, put a copy of them on the, in the living room. Put a copy of them in the bedroom. Learn them. Know them. Begin to live your life through these expressions. Don't worry. Don't worry if you find yourself doing a lot less negativity. Don't worry. The negativity will still survive if you're not doing it. <laughs> I promise you. You're, you're <laughs> you are not depriving negativity of existence. Okay. Nor are you depriving negativity of validation within you. We all have negativity. What do you think it is the Kundalini is using within you to balance the advice you know it gives you? Don't kick the dog. A basis in kicking the dog somewhere along the line. Some dog had to have been kicked. So the Kundalini says, don't kick the dog. Well, now you know that level of negativity of kicking the dog is not to be done. But it was honored. Like I said, some dog had to be kicked. But that doesn't mean that you repeat the mistake. Now you know what not to do. Now I use a very simple example, but it goes, you know, you can extend it as far as it needs to be extended. You know, you can extend it into the workplace. You can extend it into being caught in a traffic jam. You can extend it into uh, your relationships and your friendships and, 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 you know, types of scenarios. You can extend it easily into those scenarios. These are the steps that we take when we are within the grasp of a full, a full acceptance and emergence into power. We're not looking for the quick and easy fix. We are not addicts power. We're not power addicts. We earn it and we learn it and we express it. We earn, learn, and express. And you earn it by doing it. And you learn it by doing it well. And by doing it well, you express the purity of the learnings that you've just received. It's just like a Bremelin said, come into this with a pure heart or don't come here. It's very, it's very important. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, you'll hear a lot of this, a lot of newly awakened people. Oh, I don't want to devalue my negative side. Don't worry. Your, your negative side has had plenty of years, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, to flourish and to be happy. Now it's time for your divine side to begin to, to, make, the, uh, to make the caterpillar into the butterfly. And as I said before, don't worry. Your negativity, if you really want it to flourish, it will flourish. And if you really want to experience it while you're having kundalini amplification, well, the kundalini perhaps will allow you a scenario that you can can feel the amplified negativity if that's what you need to feel. Okay. There are plenty of people out there offering quick and easy access to power, and I just want you to avoid it. I want you to... I want you to go within and access your power, your kundalini power. 
You know, you can look at my pictures. You can do, my energy is yours to have. I will give it to you. I will give it to you. My kundalini is designed to be given. Some people are designed, you know, their kundalini is predicated towards healing. Uh, others, it's predicated towards teaching. Others, it's predicated towards a little bit of both. Others, it's predicated towards giving. Well, mine's predicated towards a lot, a lot of the areas that I'm not even allowed to say. But it's mostly predicated towards giving to you through this voice, through these teachings, to you. I suggest if you can, I know these things can be heard on iTunes. I've never figured that out, but I don't have an iPod. I guess that could do it. Um, oh, 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 that reminds me. I'm going to change subject, quick change. Chrisom no longer has a, a, a telephone, okay? So the 707-327-7086 number is no good. And as the operator says, there is no new number. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so, so you can reach me at kfireforall at yahoo.com. That's K-F-I-R-E-F-O-R-A-L-L at yahoo.com. You can also reach me at uh, chrisom.com. Kundalini on YouTube at the YouTube uh, network. You can also reach me at uh, Chris Mitchell uh, in Facebook. Okay, so there you have it. Um, so I guess you get the point. I guess you get the point. Uh, practice the ethics and the morality continuously. This is as much as important as sitting in meditation. Matter of fact, you can make it a form of meditation, a moving meditation, an intentional-based meditation. Uh, as, you, as you hear uh, Amelia moving about, you can just imagine your ethics moving in, in a similar manner. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I lost myself again. I thought I'd knock myself off. Okay, now, if you have a question about any aspect of your Kundalini Awakening experience, uh, please give a call at 347-934-0026. Rosemary, I'm going to give you the option to ask a question if you have a question or if you'd like to make a comment. I have uh, a question, and I'm sitting here listening, and I'm thinking, and I, I think I'm like a lot of people in this work that we do, we really do see ourselves doing good things and good work. And I would like for you to do just run by things that, that we slip by. I mean, like what what's there to look for and to refine that in ourselves? Because I see for myself, I'm not a thief. I don't steal. I, you know, the, the major things that, that are that we're saying are wrong. Okay, sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, I would I would look at forgiveness and tolerance as being one of the, the top two right now. To be tolerant of people that irritate you or actions or situations that irritate you and to be forgiving of people uh, who create circumstances or create uh, hurt in your life. Uh, do that forgiveness and do it well. When you do forgiveness really well, Nothing ever bothers you. Uh, St. Francis of Assisi was a very, very uh, forgiving person. He was very activist in regards to forgiving. Uh, Christ also, you know, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. All, all these different icons in the Christian belief system are pointing towards forgiveness. So practice forgiveness all the time. Forgive yourself for for killing the insects that are in your car's radiator grill. Mm -hmm. Forgive others for doing the things that they're doing. It doesn't mean that you become a doormat. You know, if somebody hits you and you forgive them, you're not turning the other cheek to let them hit that one either. <laughs> I know, I know. It, it goes against that Christian teaching, but I think uh, getting hit on the cheek once is enough. Is enough. We can do the forgiving, and then we can step back, and they can swing again and miss. <laughs> okay. You don't need to, you know, you're not a doormat simply because you're doing kundalini tolerances and forgivenesses and gratitudes. 
Gratitude is the third big one that I'd like you to look at, Rosemary. Not just you in particular, but I'm talking to the world. Mm -hmm. Gratitude for the environment. Gratitude for the clean air, the clean water, if we had that. Gratitude for the sun and the moon and the stars and the night. Gratitude for the sacred soil that feeds us. Gratitude for our history and gratitude for our present moment that gives us the wisdom to learn from history that we don't, you know, have to be forced to repeat it. Gratitude is a major, major blessing. And the more you're, grat- the more you're gracious for, the more grace is coming for you. The more you become that which it is you seek, the more... You have reached that which it is you seek. So become tolerant, become forgiving, become gracious. Become loving and and practice selfless service. Basically, if I, for those of you who know the safeties, I'm reading, right? I'm not reading, I'm just kind of quoting from memory about the safeties. Do the Kundalini awakening safeties all the time. Granted, I don't want you doing the Tibetans 24-7. That could be a little much. (laughs) The spinning spinning alone. (laughs) But I want you to do them at least once a day. We can do that once a day, sometime. We can find time to spend to the right 21 times. And then do the second, third, fourth, and fifth Tibetan. And boom, go right into an alternate nostril compression prayer, alternate nostril breathing, and then boom, go right down into a devotion or a meditation depending on what stage of kundalini you're in. Okay. You can do that one today. Yes. Um, For me, with the safeties, I look at them as almost like a toolbox. And when I'm working on, you know, self-correction and going through my day, I pick out of that toolbox some of the safeties that I need for particular scenarios or when something comes up, like what you're saying. It might be gratitude or it might be tolerance, and I might need to use that one for a while, you know, again and again. And then I might find that, you know, forgiveness is the next one I take. So it's just something that, um, yeah, it's like a toolbox for me throughout my day. Well, no, that's very My self-correction. That's very good, and I I I, uh, I support that for everyone. You can live your life from the point of view of the safety protocols for Kundalini awakening. The worst thing that can happen to you is you become a better person. That's the worst thing that can happen to you. And the best thing that can happen to you is the safeties are a standalone activation sequence for kundalini awakening. You don't need a guru or a master or this or that. Okay. Oh, by the way, Amelia uh, posted a, a, a picture of me. Of course, of thing. She posted a picture of me, and I have some sort of a black thing on my head. I just wanted people to know that it is not black mold. Okay. <laughs> Not saying that what's inside of my head isn't black mold, but what is on the outside isn't a black mold growth. It is actually a hat. It's a hat. And I just wanted people to know that I have not all of a sudden grown black hair in the shape of a mold. So there you have it. You heard it here first. (laughs) (laughs) I give up. So, yeah, the thing is, the thing is to to really, uh, getting back to what you were saying, Rosemary, to practice Mm -hmm. tolerance, forgiveness, and gratitude. And that goes for everyone who's listening. If you can just practice those three to begin with, tolerance, forgiveness, gratitude, in whatever order you want, this will take you a long ways towards kundalini-based refinement. Okay, kundalini-based refinement, which is what a person wants to have when they're awakening the kundalini. Um, I have a little bit of time, so I'm going to talk about this. Uh, There's a guy, 
uh, back in the last century, a guy named Samuel Weor, I believe his name is, Samuel Weor. Samuel uh, is a European guy, and he came down to the Amazon area, and he started to do ayahuasca. Ayahuasca, as some of you may know, is a hallucinogenic entheogen. Entheogen means a plant helper, a, a what they call light-bearing plants. Okay, light-bearing plant meaning that it will take you on a on a a journey, a, a spiritual journey. And so, well, Samuel evidently didn't know this, or he had a bad experience. But either way, he came out with a bunch of writings that were very, very, very critical of Kundalini. And, and one of the things that he wrote about was something called a Kunda Tiguador. The Kunda Tiguador. First of all, I like the name. I think it's very cool. I think it's better for a rock band than uh, a manifestation of Kundalini. But maybe he didn't have a rock band. The Kunda Tiguador, as, as he described, it was a very, very, very long tail that one would get as they became suffused with demonic uh, uh, consciousness and, and basically uh, from then on you become a, a servant of, of, uh, of Satan and you fly around the earth with these bat-like wings and this big long Kunda Tiguador tail and you become a servant of, of Satan. Uh, this is not true. This is not truth. This is fear based upon experiential misunderstanding. Yes, your tailbone might move. It might wag side to side. It might wag up or down. But it's not going to grow and it's not going to protrude through your body as a new uh, prehensile <laughs> tail. Okay, no. No. You don't have to become a servant of Satan. No. Uh, you don't have to have any of the things that Samuel's fear-mongering uh, produces. Now, you can you can become uh, uh, Satan's minion, if you wish. You know, that, that opportunity is there for you, if you wish it, uh, if he'll take you, or if it will take you. But uh, it is not a guarantee. It is not a guarantee. Okay. There, of, of all the really negative things that are being said about Kundalini on the Internet these days, uh, you know, the Kunda Tiguador thing comes up. Uh, my supposed terrible crimes come up. Um, also, uh, uh, Kundalini syndrome issues come up, and that... The Kundalini syndrome and uh, the, the Christian antipathy towards Kundalini is mostly what you're going to see there. Um, forgive the Christians, for they know not what they do. Okay, just forgive them. Uh, tolerate them if you have to. Uh, I mean, if you're around them a lot, just be tolerant of their belief system and just forgive them, forgive them, forgive them. They're good people. They're just in a stage of refinement right now. This certain classroom called Christianity, and it's helping them to develop their moral compass. Forgive them, be tolerant, and be grateful that, that you are where you are. Okay, number one. Uh, there is nothing fear-based about Kundalini except that it does, in, uh, it does bring change upon all the systems of the body. So that can be scary, I admit it. You know, all of a sudden you start to see what's around us all the time, and because you haven't seen it before, that can also be scary, like entities and whatnot. Uh, you know, we are not the end-all, be-all with regards to spiritual creation, and that can also be a shock to a system that, you know, believes that we are the end-all, be-all, you know, such as Christianity and, and some other systems. Okay. We are part of a very, very, very big, very, very beautiful, exquisite experiment in uh, soul refinement. We're like a soul refining factory, and uh, the, the product that we put out is is uh, awakened kundalini, and then the person moves on to another uh, process, the kundalini process after that. Uh, but while we're here encased in the five-body system, we are in that soul refinement system, moving towards kundalini. 
So don't let anything that you read on the Internet scare you away from the kundalini, from your kundalini, from your personal truth, which is really what we're talking about here. Kundalini is your personal truth. It is your personal truth, your personal doorway into your own personal divine expression, your own personal divine life. And yes, it goes against a lot of the programming that that society has placed in you. It's because you're moving beyond your society and the way you think. You're moving beyond. You're becoming that light that everybody wants to be, evidently, if you read the, uh, the secret, as Rosemary was telling me about it. Rosemary was telling me about the secret earlier today in the car, and and, uh, and I was giving her my opinion of the secret, which probably doesn't really need to be given here. (laughs) It's at you, Amelia. The scenario is... (laughs) What? I beg your pardon. I thought I was on mute prison. That Uh, was me. I'm going on. So you're, you're, I'm going on you were exhaling and sneezing and coughing, and I can even was, hear was, earwax was, dripping. <laughs> I was laughing about the secrets because I'd like to know what you think of the secrets because I oh. have, you know, I, I never bought into it myself, so I was curious to know what you thought. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's just easy, it's just easy. Well, it's just easy access to power is what they're teaching. Easy access to yeah. power. Yeah. If you think this way, then you'll get all the money that you ever wanted. If you think that way, well, you'll get that brand new car. <laughs> I just yeah. expect Bob Barker to come in here sometime, you know, and says, which is it, door number one, door number two, door number three? <laughs> you know, uh, people, people have really uh, got to get their ego under control first. And a person may ask, well, what is the ego? What is that? What, what does an ego consist of? Kristen, give me it in a linear, logical sense. What is the ego? Well, the ego is that uh, aspect of you that has a peace in every one of your five bodies. It has peace. Okay, your ego is that little inner child of yourself. In the uh, Huna terms, the ego would be the unihipili. Okay, so, so within that structure... Uh, you need to begin to control that inner child. The ego is like a, you know, a seven or eight year old. Well, yeah, six, seven or eight year old, depending on the on the person. And that that six or seven or eight year old child within you wants to be noticed, wants to have what it wants, wants to be loved, wants to be honored, wants to have given total freedom to do whatever it wants to do. And you, as a higher mental functioning component of your consciousness, you have the job of training the ego not to be a problem or not to be an impediment to spiritual evolution. How's that? That's brilliant. <laughs> no. That is actually excellent in the sense that that's very compressed and very precise. And, and yeah, it's very clear, cousin. Well, that's the Kundalini. The Kundalini yeah. will do that for you. You just—it's weird. It's like people go, "Well, how can you give a uh, an a two-hour interview just off the top of your head?" And it says, "Well, it isn't off the top of my head. It has really nothing to do with my head, so to speak. It's really more of the the other two thirds of who I am. Uh, you know, the Kundalini." And the kundalini will literally put words in your mouth. Not only that, the kundalini will literally steer you from one concept to another and then bring you back to that original concept. And you're just kind of going, wow, I could never do that in my wildest dreams. (laughs) (laughs) Extemporaneous, right? This is all extemporaneous, folks. I got no script here. Yeah. Okay, no, no that is no... excellent because ego is something that um, you know we all talk about and debate and what is it, and we all have different versions of what ego is, and sometimes it's semantics the way we use it. But that that is excellent. Thank you. Continue. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. you're welcome. And if yeah. anybody would like to call in, it's three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. And I'll also accept questions out of the chat room if anybody there has a question. Uh, about the chat well, room, certainly. Yes. 
Yes. He would like to comment that he, he particularly liked that photograph of the mould, <laughs> of the hat. The mould, the mould photograph. The hat. He liked the photograph, so he, he's the, just saying. Well, let's come to agreement, it'll just be the mouldy hat. How's that? <laughs> well, he likes the look of it. It's a good picture. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. But there are, no you other que- there are no other questions. Okay, very good, very good. We will continue. So getting back uh, to the beginning uh, of, of the subject of this discussion is divinity. Divinity has its hands in everything, and yet it chooses how it will be expressed by the individual. So i.e., uh, Chrism has Kundalini awakened in him. And so the, do, the, the, the divinity chooses what is going on with how Chrism is delineating and expressing the knowledge that the Kundalini wants brought out into the public. I'm not allowed to bring everything out. I'll tell you that right now. You know, I've got Rosemary uh, uh, out here in, in the in the um, ashram, and you know, she's doing the whole shadow work, and uh, and it's not what you think. And uh, you know, the Kundalini is there, giving her instruction, giving me instruction for her, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. It, it just goes on and on and on. Divinity is Kundalini. Kundalini is divinity. You are divine. You have that divine spark within you, and it will teach you. It will train you. I had no teacher, and I was a particularly really bad student when it comes to to, to the expectations I have of my students, if you could call those expectations. Yeah, I was, you know, I made every mistake you could possibly make on purpose sometimes just because I was angry at being forced to change this way or transform that way. Um, but Kundalini also knew that I wasn't in an area where there were any teachers of whatsoever with the Kundalini and, and that I had to wait until I could afford to get into a computer cafe. And that tells you a little bit about my finances of the day at that time. You know, until I could afford to pay that dollar fifty an hour or something it was, to get online and, and to learn how to use a computer. I had no idea about how to use a keyboard. And then to receive the information from the Kundalini, to read information about the Kundalini, and to have my Kundalini go, yep, that's right, nope, that's not right, yep, that's right, nope, that's not right, and so on and so forth, until I had a very clear understanding of what my Kundalini was indicating as, as a way to live your life in a pro-harmonious relationship with your kundalini so that there there is no fear because your trust is so strong there is no fear because your your forgiveness is so strong there is no problem because your 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 love is so strong for the kundalini for others for all creation that you are that strength of all creation and nothing can harm you This is what you're moving into. Yes, 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 there are, there are paths that you can choose that are very painful for you. Absolutely. If you want to go there, fine. Go there. Have a good time or a bad time, however it may be for you. But you don't have to go there. You don't have to, to, to lust after power so much that you're willing to sacrifice your, your morals and your ethics uh, for Kundalini awakening, you don't need to have somebody else read your tarot cards or somebody else provide you with 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 Enochian mantras that you know they don't even know the meaning of. There's no need to 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 practice hurtful, negative things in your life in order to have Kundalini. You can do good. You can be good. You can. It's like you're the I and the Tao. Okay, the Tao, for those who don't know, is that Chinese symbol of two teardrops or water droplets chasing each other. One has a black eye. One has a a white eye. The 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 black teardrop has the white eye, and the white teardrop has the black eye. We are like the white eye and the black 
teardrop. And the Kundalini, the Kundalini by by our acceptance of its expression through us, allows us resonance with the large body of grace, which that white teardrop would represent. And you can grace... Grace is with both teardrops. It's just what levels you want to experience. Do you need more lessons in negativity? Do you need more lessons in fear? Do you need more lessons in attachment? There's an option there for you. Do you want to get clear of attachment? Do you want to get clear of being confined to a five-sense, five-body, karmically driven human vehicle? Well, that option is there for you, too. What do you choose? What do you choose? What do you choose, Amelia? She's running for the mic now. Running, running. (laughs) (laughs) Do you choose? Okay. Were you even paying attention at all? What were you I, I, I was tea? not paying I, that's You caught me. No, I was not paying attention. <laughs> I was talking about I was thinking, how, you pick, I was how, you pick a, how do you pick a ripe watermelon? That was my question. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing something else. I rarely am. I'm normal, but I was. Okay. Yeah, I did not hear. Well, I'm going to ask Rosemary. Rosemary, what do you choose? Choose the five star life. What does that mean? That means working working hard, not in a in a bad way or an ego way, but queuing up to just the things that you you said about forgiveness and uh, gratitude, tolerance, and I'm learning those at another level here. And I, I just know from what you're saying, it, it doesn't feel comfortable all the time. But I, I know that I'm uh, in a growing setting and I'm in a growing time in my life. And I'm choosing to stretch that bit rather than um, just was before. And I've said a number of times, I have had a a, um, a focused life and a time of service and all those general good things. <clears throat> and so that was the reason for my question of how to, what is that? And as, you know, as soon as you said it, I said, of course, you know, but, but the specifics you gave were, but it's a choice. It's a choice. Well, I'm glad that you have made that choice, Rosemary. And that you continue to make that choice. Melia, how, how have you chosen? Oh, that's right. You were drinking tea or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually reading the Facebook, a conversation on Facebook that's very interesting and um, kind of pertinent in a way to what you've been talking about. So I, I completely focused on it and I, I apologize. No, it's all good. It's all um, good. Uh, well, I just yeah, want to say yeah. something. I, I wish I could say... answer the question. I, I feel, yeah, but anyway, I don't know what it was, so. It's okay. It's not about watermelons, though. I just want you to know that. (laughs) Now, I want to say thank you to you, Amelia Centara, and to your husband, John, and to all your children, and to to Chance and Shakti. I want to say thank you for your support of this this program. So thank you. You're welcome. I, I would like to thank Glenn Ola for the design and maintenance of Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com. I would like to thank Rosemary and Eileen Laurel and Amelia Centara for the many gifts that they're that they're giving by putting these seminars together. I would like to thank Eileen Laurel for disseminating the, the teachings that have been given. Uh, I would like to thank everybody who is listening today and everybody who's going to be listening in the future. Um, all my friends on Facebook and on Yahoo, uh, I'd like to thank you. Google Plus, I still don't know how to work, so... I, I, I keep getting friends there, but, well, it's just another learning curve. Um, 
Thank you for all who are watching the YouTube videos, and I encourage you to watch those videos. And uh, in summary, do not go for quick and easy uh, access to power. Go within. Don't look outside of yourself. Don't use sigils. Don't use spells. Don't use uh, uh, Enochian mantras. Don't use anything that can be used uh, that is hurtful for you or for other people or for the environment or for the animals or insects or fish or the air. Practice the safeties if you can. And uh, thank you for listening to this broadcast. Thank you, Amelia, for being a co-host. Did you want to, to, to say adieu? Adieu, adieu. I'm, I'm tempted to, I suppose we're finished. I, I was just interested in a few points that somebody made here. Um, well, could I just read one, we, we, We've got time. We've yeah. got time. Okay, okay. Um, so she says, as soon as we see we are wielding the power, we have stepped into sorcery, and we have partnered with an entity while believing that the power is coming from us. That is the line that has been clearly drawn before me by the hand of God. You can see why the path of surrender is quite unappealing to anyone who wants control and power. Ah, very, very appropriate. Who wrote that? Well, Laura wrote just, that. Just the first name. Just the first name. What? Yeah, yeah. And Laura also says, um, and this is so beautiful, Chris, and she says, you will only partner with the divine when you come to your kundalini as a child, bearing your full weakness and powerlessness, not in self-pity, because that is a manipulative state of control. No, you must unravel on the last of your divine mother and surrender your powerlessness. You will healing and be released from the burden of needing and wanting to control it. There you go. That's that's excellent. That's excellent. And everybody, just so you know, that is at Kundalini Awakening exclamation point. Okay, that's on Facebook. Uh, thank you for reading that, Amelia. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, when we're using intention... Uh, we can be called, you know, that's called sorcery. When you're in surrender and allowing the kundalini to move through you for whatever reason, that is surrendering to the kundalini, and it's very different. Those are very different concepts. I do not. Yes, she, she, go ahead. She, I've another little that I, I will read. She says, The ego will never be fed by the Holy Spirit, but an entity will offer an agreement where you feel like you have some kind of ownership of the experience. Even the focus you may put on the particular answer you want to hear is tricking yourself into feeling like you are somehow in control. Hence, you slip outside of the protection of holy surrender and into the realm of control. Any output on your part is outside of God, subject to entity partnership. When you are only receiving and giving your full willpower up, that is when you are outside of entity influence because there is nothing to grab hold of. The only thing you can do is practice. You will come to understand the nature of God and recognize immediately when something is not operating in the framework. Anything that is rushing you is not from God. Just to give one example. (laughs) There are many subtle cues you need only to ask God to teach them to you. Then surrender to the truth when it presents you with the answer. Very, very, very well written, I think. I I completely agree with with Laura. Laura, yes, yes, yes. Laura, Laura. Yes, Laura, yes. Good, good, good. Thank you. Thank you for reading that. And there you go, folks. There you have it. And you can tell that was her kundalini writing that. Can you tell that, Amelia? Well, absolutely. That's why I read it and I yeah. got sidetracked. Yeah. <laughs> That's her Kundalini. That is Laura's Kundalini writing that. In, in some way, there were very absolutist tendencies within those writings that she gave. But I'm okay with that because I can feel the Kundalini in those words. I can feel that because I surrender to mine. Amelia, yes, as can I. 
Yeah, yeah, and, and I think that that as as everyone who listens to this uh, to this blog talk to this uh, this this broadcast, uh, they too will feel the Kundalini in Laura's words. And, that, and I would like, so that I would like to thank. That discussion is fact, actually happening. Why don't you Why don't you go right on that? That it's that that uh, that this. Part of that discussion is broadcast on this uh, segment. They may, they may want to hear it. Yes, I will. And that, that discussion actually is quite a long one, and it's on the um, Kundalini Healing Group, which is a public group. So anybody could go and read that if they have an interest. Oh, good, good. There you go. It's on the Kundalini Healing Group in Facebook. Yeah. Everyone. Anyway, I'd like to thank you, Amelia, your family. I'd like to thank Rosemary. I'd like to thank Lasha. I'd like to thank Glenn Ola, Eileen Laurel, and uh, Francine Victoria. I would like to thank Max and and Zamar and Sugar Babe, uh, Nestle. Huh? What? What? Oh, uh, Ed. Ed. (laughs) Rose. Rosemary is providing me with with uh, extra things to be grateful for. So thank you, Rosemary. I would like to thank Ed for the uh, communication box, and and uh, I, I need to let people know that that uh, Ed has been Ed provided the internet service for this broadcast, and and uh, we are all indebted to him uh, and and uh, the O'Connors in Ireland uh, for this broadcast going out. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And we'll talk with you again next week.